You either choose the pain of staying where you are now or the pain of growing. Whilst it's easy to glorify personal growth and list up all the good stuff that comes with it, there still is a certain level of pain and discomfort involved. And that's what not everybody wants to talk about, but it's actually crucial to highlight because this exact pain is one of the reasons many people might not ever choose to go that path. This is why some people might never even try to pursue what they actually want to do and instead choose the pain or cost of regret of staying where they are. What can help make it less scary is to talk about it more often and shed some light on what's happening because this will allow your brain to feel more prepared to deal with these things along the way. So let's no longer sugarcoat the reality of leveling up and shed some light on the cost of doing so in this episode. I do already want to point out that in my humble opinion, the cost of leveling up pales in comparison to the alternative cost of regret for not pursuing our dreams and aspirations. But what does it really take when deciding to have faith and to make the empowered choice to pursue a fulfilling life of purpose? Well, the first thing here is uncertainty. You will have to embrace uncertainty and be willing to step into the unknown. There is no blueprint you can follow. You are the one who must create your own roadmap to success, to your personal success, whatever that means for you, whatever your personal definition of success is. However, this also means that with every step you take, you will discover new strengths and unlock new hidden potential and also cultivate, obviously, resilience. You will learn to figure stuff out and learn by doing so along the way. Prime example from my side, since starting my own business, I learned to master dozens of new systems to set everything up in the back end of my business. This also made me appreciate those so much more when looking at other websites or processes as I know how much time like, and work goes into all of this to just set it up. But you will need to be dedicated to your goals and disciplined enough to show up every day and take the required and most importantly consistent action to make it work and to consistently embrace the uncertainty to make it work. Next, you will also invest time and energy. I do want to say here, like you would invest time and energy anyway, because time continues to just pass by, right? The difference between like where you're, if you're spending the time and energy between where you are now or because you do what you want to do for yourself and for your own happiness is that if you do something that is truly for you and is aligned with your values and your goals, that is the, the feeling that's just irreplaceable because the rewards gained in terms of personal satisfaction and growth just far outweigh the investment and this pain of and energy that you are putting into when you're staying where you are. So staying where you are now is a choice. And that also re requires discipline because you constantly have to push away your dreams. You constantly have to silence those voices that are like, hey, why don't you try this? Hey, I always wanted to maybe paint more or to I don't know, start a buck farm, whatever it is that your passion is, right? So why not invest that energy instead of trying to shut down those dreams into giving them actually a true shot? And the next thing is you will feel discomfort on a daily basis as you keep on pushing beyond your comfort zone. So that means you will face fears and take risks, but this also means that you will expand your limits and you crush your self-doubt, develop new perspectives, you become a leader in life and inspiration for others. So you are embodying paving a path of self-belief and opportunities. And this is what changes the world, okay? It's not the people who want to have everything stay the same. Otherwise, we would still be living in caves. So staying in the hamster wheel and conforming to all the norms and expectations maybe grants you an easy life, but it will not create the change you want to see in this world. And it, it takes you to do it, no one else. Last but not least, there is also a certain level of grief for what was, for who you were, what you had built before, the people who might no longer be aligned with you anymore as well, and therefore like drift out of your life. Because you will outgrow your old version and others along the way, and that is not always easy to take in. But the thing is, some people might only ever be meant to stay in your life for a little while. And what helped me, for example, through this grief, was to focus on the good times and be grateful for them as well as the lessons learned while allowing myself to be detached from them in order for me to continue to grow. This also means letting them go so they can grow and go their own way. And I always love to look at it from a perspective of 
setting both sides free rather than staying chained up, clinging onto something that's not meant to be anymore for neither of us, because we don't want to deal with those feelings of loss. And I want to say, like, whilst these might be valid worries, like all of them, choosing to forego personal growth, in my opinion, is settling for a life of comfort and mediocrity because it may seem easy in the short term. I guess I said it. And you know why? Because you are so worthy and capable of so much more. So do think in the long term. Not only that, the cost of regret can be significant and long lasting. Regret arises from the realization that you never pursued your dreams or fully embraced your potential. It can lead to feelings of stagnation, unfulfilled potential, and a life tinged with what if. And as Gary Vaynerchuk describes it in his book, 12 and a half, regret is the biggest poison of them all. And that, that's when we need to use conviction and ambition and tenacity to push our limits and take the leap. In fact, confidence is really merely is a byproduct of conviction, okay? If you're convinced, you will reach your goal, no matter what, and you keep on stepping outside the zone of self-limitation, aka your comfort zone, and you will inevitably grow your confidence in the process. Though you believe you can, your confidence will follow. And to live a life completely free of regret, always remember this one question. What do you want to remember the most about yourself and your life when looking back at old age. And choosing to give your best self, your best life, a chance will never ever lead to regret. Only burying your dreams will. Choosing to grow will never ever make your life worse off than it is now. It can only improve. The return of investment, the ROI, is exactly what you put in and is utterly in your control. So knowing this, knowing this, I want to ask you, why would you not do it? There will be loads of what the actual facts on this path of growth. There will be moments when you might think that you are back to ground zero or things are plateauing. This is not to discourage you. This is to help you be fully prepared for when shit hits the fan. Therefore, you know how to deal with the setbacks in the form of self-doubt. And the one thing that will get you through any challenge is resilience. So I will tell you right here and now that you already have a hell of a lot of resilience because otherwise you wouldn't be here right now in the first place, okay? So far you have faced and survived all of the big and small challenges that life has thrown at you, which means that there is no doubt that you will also be able to face any new ones coming your way. I'm pointing this out to really nip the self-doubt that might be creeping up right now in the bud, but I also want to show you different ways in which you can further train your resilience. Because yes, it can be trained as can mostly be anything. And the best way to go about it is through, first up, creating your own blueprint of life when attempting the seemingly impossible. For example, people have told me it's impossible to make it as a coach or have belittled the professional role or simply didn't take it seriously and just call it a little business. But today, here we are three years later and there's no end in sight at all, despite me taking on a corporate job to further support my family and feed back into the business to take it to the next level. And this means we are just getting started and bigger things will be coming, like more life-changing impact is to be made and more women and people like you are to be supported on their journey. So yes, it's hard sometimes. Yes, there's doubt at times, but it is the tools and the constant mindset work that keeps me going, that will help you to keep going as well and to believe and to make some awesome shit happen. So to follow your purpose means to become your own trailblazer, made, meaning you must map out the path that no one has walked before because no one can actually walk it except for you. Others are walking their paths and they might cross or you might support one another, but the path you are on is just for you. And it is in your only responsibility, the, I can't talk, responsibility to create your very own blueprint. However, the one and most important thing is to believe that it is possible for you to do that from the get-go. And to support you in this and to strengthen your minds and to build your resilience even further, we will dive into some lessons originating from Stoicism. So first up, what is Stoicism? Stoicism in itself is just an ancient Greek philosophy that has gained actually renewed interest in recent years due to its very practical applications in modern life, including in leadership roles specifically. 
But at its core, Stoicism is just about cultivating inner resilience and equanimity in the face of adversity, aka challenges, and focusing on what is within our control rather than getting bogged down with like the external factors, what's not in our control. And it offers very practical and powerful frameworks to assist in making rounded decisions, maintain composure in stressful situations, focus on your own actions rather than trying to control others, inspire your team maybe if you are in corporate with like a shared sense of purpose create and create a positive, productive work, live business environment. And as you are creating your own blueprint and dealing with the setbacks and challenges along the way, you are already building resilience. You are already practicing all of that. And it is in seeing any setbacks, challenges and failure, not as permanent stumbling blocks, but rather stepping stones towards your success. It is really in the art of stopping to play the victim player role and get, out, get yourself out of that shithole. So instead of dwelling on disappointment, learn from your mistakes, adapt quickly, and then bounce back stronger than before. This will then empower you to face challenges head on, persevere through adversity, and maintain that unwavering determination we are looking for here. So for example, when I was burnt out and depressed and found myself in a toxic relationship and work environment, I could have called it quits. I could have played the victim player and said, I can't do this anymore, it's all too unfair and life is not worth it, but I didn't. Instead, I decided that I will not be the victim of the story, but to become the woman who rose from the ashes and turned her life around. And I did. And so can you. Like, it's literally up to you and in your power and choice to become more resilient and to make it through this too. Another way to increase your resilience through like everyday tasks or like activities is through putting yourself in situations where you are most likely to experience failure. And yes, that means to seek out situations in which you will most certainly fail or be challenged. So these situations maybe include learning a new skill or taking on a new hobby, but do something that you have never done before and you will experience the teaching nature of the beginner's mind. And to get most out of it and progress quickly, go by the concept of failing fast so you can learn and try again fast as well. The key here is to continue trying and trying and trying because it is only those who persevere through the discomfort of failing who will then truly reap the success. And by consciously putting yourself out there and facing these struggles in the zone of discomfort, you step into a heroic role in life, in your own life, and transform your being as you come back stronger and more resilient from each challenge. However, and this is a very interesting point that William B. Irvine, if I hopefully say it correctly, states in his book, The Stoic Challenge, is that there are actually two setback challenges that you must overcome. And he calls it the post-setback setback challenge. Yes, there's two setbacks in this. Meaning this challenge, the second one, comes with the emotional reaction to the first setback. Setback. If you let yourself go down the rabbit hole of frustration and anger, you will experience another setback in terms of emotional and mental exhaustion as you lose control over the rush of negative emotions and let yourself be crushed by their weight. So allowing negative emotions or saboteurs, as we know, to take over your life in any way will not lead to happiness. That doesn't mean by any way to invalidate your experience or to just bottle them up but to acknowledge them and take them a step back by taking a deep breath in and deciding how you're going to deal with the situation. You can't make clear-headed decisions that are aligned with your values when you are swarmed by negative feelings. And in addition, I will challenge you to think about whether you really want to carry your negative memories all the way up into old age as well. And I guess, no. Like at the end, you just want to look back at a happy life that we are happy and proud of. And with that, I hope this awareness of how personal growth can truly look like and what we have to go through and what we can also train and do to kind of like face it in a slightly better way with like all of those tools, thanks to the stoicism to become more resilient, makes it a little bit less scary to go for the change you seek. Because the thing is, it's not about just wanting change. It's about wanting to change. We gotta change ourselves. 
So if you like this episode and want more like this, please do leave a like on YouTube and a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcast. It's a couple of taps for you that mean the world to me and, I, and it will help this podcast to reach many more people. So thanks for watching and listening and I will see you again soon with another episode. Bye.